A lot of you might be familiar with the Nano Text Editor. It's been a staple on Linux for quite some time, and is essentially the default terminal text editor on most Linux distribution these days. But that doesn't mean it's actually any good. In fact, it's pretty astounding just how bad Nano actually is once you start using it with any amount of regularity. It's supposed to be this simple and easy to use text editor that you can whip out whenever you need to make quick edits in the terminal, but it's actually not very intuitive and lacks a lot of basic features that you'd expect. Now, it is simple enough to start using Nano. I can create a new file just by typing Nano, followed by the desired name of the file, and it'll create it in my current directory, and I can just start typing here. Now I'll exit out of here with the shortcut Control x by the way. Yeah, weird shortcuts are one of its biggest problems. But we can look at editing an existing file by typing nano, then the path to a given file. So opening up a short config file for OBS Studio here, it shows the file alright, but we start to see a lot of nano's shortcomings as we start to work with this. For instance, there's this little cheat sheet for shortcuts at the bottom, but you'll realize quite quickly that the shortcuts themselves are really weird and not very intuitive. Even simple things like copying and pasting are completely different from just about any other standard out there. Now, don't get me wrong, learning weird keyboard shortcuts could be worthwhile if the rest of the app is really useful. After all, that's essentially the case with editors like Vim or Emacs that have a sort of steep learning curve, but it really pays off in the end. But Nano just doesn't have any functionality that makes it worth using over something else. Like, there's pretty much no syntax highlighting in files, it's just showing the text, and even using the mouse to scroll is unintuitive. You'll notice it's not actually scrolling the page, but rather just moving the cursor up and down by line, which only moves the page once the cursor reaches the top or bottom of the current view. And there's certainly no mouse support for selecting text or anything like that. Nano is full of weird quirks like this and just doesn't offer many features. But moving on, if we exit out of this. There's an alternative that's actually even easier to use than Nano, but also has way more and better features. And it's called Micro. Get it? Micro, Nano, Nano, Micro, Size, dip. Eh. Anyway, it should be in just about every distro's package manager, so here on Debian or any Ubuntu-based system, you'd install it with sudo apt install micro. And if we open that same config file with micro instead of nano, so just type micro then the path to the file, we immediately see a better experience here thanks to automatic syntax highlighting. And this works out of the box on all sorts of text formats and code languages, and if you know what you're doing, you can even create your own and add even more. But this just makes it so much easier to glance at a file and immediately understand what's happening and where the different bits of code are. Or just general text or configuration file info for editing those little files here and there. After all, not all of us code. And if you're someone that's really used to navigating documents with the mouse, Micro not only supports proper page scrolling, like you can see here, but it also lets you click and drag to select and manipulate the text, just as you'd expect in a graphical text editor. And messing around here, I've just deleted some stuff I didn't mean to, so I can undo it with Ctrl Z as you'd expect. And that's the other thing. While it doesn't have this little cheat sheet of shortcuts at the bottom like Nano does, it doesn't really need one because Micro uses pretty much standard shortcuts like most other text editors. Well, except for Vim. But if you're already using Vim, then you probably don't have much use for Micro, other than to never have to touch Nano again. Please don't. So for the occasional time that you need a terminal text editor for making quick changes, you should definitely replace Nano with Micro. But I'd argue that Micro has enough features to also be worth using as your primary text editor for everything. For example, Micro has a system of plugins that can be coded in the Lua programming language, and users can submit their creations to be included in Micro's plugin repository. We can browse a lot of the plugins on their site here. And taking a look at these, this misspell one looks pretty handy for correcting misspelled words. And looking at how to install it, it's just a single simple command. All we have to do in the terminal is type micro, 
dash plugin, install, and then the name of the plugin, in this case, misspell. Now, regarding the configuration of Micro, all the config files are stored in your home folder under .config slash micro. In here, we see two .json files, one to manage the key bindings, or shortcuts, and the other for some application-specific settings. This is also the folder that you could create an init.lua file if you want to customize Micro even further with Lua scripting. We'll open up the bindings file here to look at the custom shortcuts, and we can see that it's pretty straightforward to add custom ones of our own. All you have to do is type the shortcut in quotes, then a colon, space, and then the respective action in quotes. And make sure to put a comma at the end of each one if you're going to put another one beneath that. Now, while some of this configuration is a bit outside the scope of what I want to cover today, it's really easy to learn more about it. Besides having documentation on the GitHub page and having a man page with some key info, Micro also has a built-in help system. Whenever you're in Micro, you can press Ctrl E to enter command mode and type help to display the main help file, or type help followed by a topic to learn more about that specific topic. For example, I'll press command E and type help space key bindings, and Micro opens up help documentation explaining everything we might want to know about the key bindings, including how to view the default hotkeys, where custom bindings are stored, and how to edit them, the possible bindable actions, yeah, pretty much everything you'd want to know about it is here. So for example, to create a split window view, we would enter command mode with control E and type either H split or V split to create a horizontal or vertical split respectively. And you could type a file path after it to open to a specific file. But say we want to bind a new split to a specific shortcut so we don't have to type that command each time. Well, we just need to open up that key bindings file and add it. So in the file here, I'll go to a new line and I'll choose Control alt v for a vertical split, and then I'll put a colon and a space, and I'll just type v-split as the action. Then on the next line, I'll do Control alt h for a horizontal split, which is h-split. And I'll make sure to put a comma after that last one, since we've added some shortcuts below it. And this errored out for me, it didn't work, so going back in here, actually these actions need to have the S in split capitalized as well. So now we'll save that file here with Control S, then exit with Control Q. Now when back in Micro, we can just press Control Alt V or Control Alt H to create a new split. And the horizontal split doesn't seem to be working here, so I'm guessing that hotkey might already be used for something else. So I'll go back into the bindings file real quick and change that to, let's say, Control alt z and see if that works. There we go. We can now use the new hotkeys for creating the splits. And the default hotkey of Control w switches between them. Though, of course, that can be changed as well if you want. So I highly recommend checking out Micro because, frankly, nobody should have to use Nano. And honestly, Micro is way easier to use with far better features. Now, I suppose if you're someone that's using Vim or Emacs already, then this might not be quite your cup of tea. Though you could still rebind the keys to something that you're more familiar with, and it would probably be a pretty nice experience. And for just about everyone else looking for a capable and extensible yet still easy to use text editor, I don't think you can go wrong with Micro. But do let me know in the comments what you think of Micro or what your preferred text editor is. So, a huge thank you to everyone supporting the channel thus far. If you're interested in doing so, a like on this video and a sub to the channel would be appreciated. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time on Planet Linux.